Yoi Mia was released with probably the most hate out of any single 5 star ever. She was pretty much universally clowned on as being a Hu Tao or Shangling downgrade, a no value unit, and a must skip. Despite this, many players such as me got her anyways. And since I did, she's become my overall most used DPS. So let me tell you why and help you decide if you should get her or not and how to make the most of her if you do. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Yoimiya is an on-field pyro DPS who deals damage almost exclusively in single target. She infuses her normal attacks with her skill and performs a 5-hit combo that's able to vaporize her strongest hits. She is very easy to play compared to her counterpart Hu Tao, but trades this comfort for damage potential. Even still, she has multiple advantages, being able to easily reach her damage ceiling from many players, her superior range, and yes, her auto-targeting, which has value against randomly moving enemies that are otherwise very annoying to track. Her range plus auto-targeting allows her to not need to chase down enemies nearly as much, adding this to the fact that she's often used with strong off-field DPSs such as Yolan or Farina, and together her practical damage is often much closer to the likes of Hu Tao or Shangling teams than the theoretical damage numbers would have you believe. This is especially true for players who don't optimize Hu Tao's damage, and often for mobile players as well. She does have a couple other downgrades, however, being her lack of interruption resistance in her kit, so to get off her 5-hit combo, which is just hitting normal attack 5 times, you're very incentivized to run a shielder, even though her damage potential is still highest without one. In addition, she has virtually no AoE at all, as her burst has a very small portion of her damage, and that's the only part of her kit that has any AoE, but even even then it's not very big or very frequent. This means that unless she can mow down mobs extremely quickly, it often feels very bad to play her in the abyss outside of boss chambers or scenarios where there's just one or two targets at a time. That being said, in the overworld or for trash mobs in the abyss, she actually feels surprisingly good in AoE due to her auto targeting and range allowing her to mow down mobs much quicker than you'd expect. She's a very free to play friendly character in the sense that she has a lot of solid teams Teams, great free-to-play weapons, and a very resin-efficient artifact set. She's also one of the better overworld characters in the game, meaning for the majority of players, although she might not be your abyss carry all the time, she might be the quality of life and eye candy you need to have fun for the majority of your playtime in Genshin. And although she's not the best in the abyss compared to other limited 5 stars, don't get me wrong, there's only ever been one abyss that I've ever struggled to 36 star with her, which both sides heavily feel featured very tanky AoE chambers, so by and large, you generally don't have to worry. So for Yoimiya's teams, there's basically two types, either shielded teams or shielderless teams. I found in practice that as long as I'm fighting an enemy that lets me get off my five hit combo like half the time and the other times I get off my three hit combo, dodging in the middle of her attack string is not that big of a deal, especially when you're using a team like this, where a lot of the damage is coming from the likes of Farina and Yalan. That being said, especially when you're new or if you're on mobile or you just don't like dodging or you just find it really annoying, it can be a pain to use her on shielderless teams. It's just generally what I prefer because the enemies die faster and I don't mind having to dodge. So looking at the actual teams themselves, this I've found performs the best overall. Bennett providing power resonance, buffing Yoimiya, being the healer for the team, Farina buffing Yoimiya and Yolan, Yolan doing lot damage, and there's no VV swirl setups to do. You don't have to worry about getting the exact right rotations. Like obviously you want to start with Farina, skill and burst, Yolan burst and skill, and it's skill and burst and then go to ham with Yoimiya. But it's very easy to play, aside from the fact that you have to dosh, da, dodge. Ah, I combine them. Um, I, a lot of characters don't like staying in Bennett's circle. Circle impact can be annoying if the boss, if the enemies move out of your range. But Yoimiya doesn't mind it at all because she's easily able to reposition with her dash either while you're dodging or after you finish your five hit combo, it's actually optimal to dash. And you can easily just dash back into Bennett's circle. And all of these characters have really good range. You'll have no trouble hitting the boss from Bennett's circle like 90 
99% of the time. Um, you can easily swap Bennett for Jean here. You'll really never be able to get a double swirl. I mean, you can try, but I've never really got it able to work even remotely consistently because Yoimiya does apply Pyro with her burst. So there is maybe a way you could do it sometimes, but it's really not something that you can do consistently. Charlotte's an all right option here if you can manage to get Thrilling Tails onto your Charlotte because she can then pass that to Yoimiya. Not as good as Jean or Bennett, but not bad. Although I find the free teams generally the strongest, the traditional Viridus and Venera shielder list teams are really good as well. Um, they're a lot more of a pain to set up and they require a bit more practice, but the basic gist is you'll want to start off with Yolan applying Hydro. You'll want to apply Hydro with Cosmo's Burst, then Bennett, then you'll double swirl both Pyro and Hydro. And to check, you want to test and practice in the overworld before you take this into the Abyss to make sure you're able to do it. Let's see if I even got it. Uh, you check by going into Cosmo and seeing if he swirled both Pyro and Hydro. And you can see I didn't swirl Pyro. So my Pyro is at zero. My Hydro is at 33% damage. That means he gave the Hydro damage, but not the Pyro damage. So let's give this one more try. We start with Yolan, then burst and we'll check this time we got it <clears throat> for the life of me i don't actually know what's different maybe i used bennett's skill last maybe i did my swapping better but um, as you can see like we're getting huge damage um we're just mowing down this enemy um but for a lot of people the payoff you know the juice isn't always worth the squeeze it can be a bit annoying and especially after trying out the farina variants which don't require any setup any any like tricky setup any forms of swirling and have a very similar or higher damage damage potential, um, it's hard for me to recommend the VV Vape. Uh, you can also do VV Vape with a shielder, so you can swap Bennett for Toma, uh, but you're losing the damage potential that Bennett gives, and Toma's not bad, like he gives the damage buff at C6, uh, he obviously provides infinite interruption resistance and has good synergy. I tend to prefer Singcho on this team a little bit more because he strengthens Toma's shield, but I give, and also it makes the VV Vapes set up a little bit easier because he applies more Hydro, but overall I find this team, if you're going to use a shielder I just prefer to do double hydro even if I'm using Toma I prefer to use double hydro with him I don't prefer the VV vape for me the only the only real benefit for the VV vape is the really high damage potential of using this team uh, you can also switch for Farina although then the then the swirl setups become even more tight and precise so you'll definitely have to practice to make sure that you can get this off consistently um, you can also just use double damage dealer so you can use Yolan Fischl you can use Farina Fischl this is something you'll want to consider if you need you know electro to counter simon or something like that you can also use double electro with bennett you can swap bennett for sing cho and it's sort of like a weird taser team both of these are fine i expect this particular variant to get a big buff when chevris comes out and you can replace beto for chevris because you and doesn't really want to be used in aoe anyways so trying to shoehorn beto onto this team although it's nice for aoe it's usually not really worth using a character like beto who functions almost strictly in aoe as well as a character like you who functions almost strictly in single target it just doesn't work super well for me. Um, Zhongli teams I want to talk about next. Generally, where my go to are my go-to teams if the Abyss is very aggressive. If it's really aggressive, like with Capelli or something, Sing Cho is really nice to have to strengthen Zhongli's shield even further. Uh, but you can easily switch Sing Cho for Yun Jin. I like Yun Jin a lot for this team. Not only does it free up the Hydro, it has slightly higher damage potential, especially if your Yoimi is really cracked. Geo Resonance is really good for this team. The only thing to keep in mind is Yun Jin really does need a lot of investment to make her work really you need really high defense and you probably should level her to 90 you want really good talent levels and you want lots of crit rate to proc favonius there's just a lot of it's a lot of work to get yunjin up and running but if you have high constellation yunjin it can definitely be worth it um yolan is definitely the preferred choice for the team providing a damage bonus for yoimiya but you know you can swap yunjin for anything you can swap for official for singcho you can even do bennett in this slot and it doesn't absolutely have to be zhongli um i don't mind double hydro with yolan and singcho and have having Toma be the final. He provides the power resonance, his C6 buff, the Noblesse artifact set, the shielding. Um, this was generally my go-to Yoimiya team way back in the day before I had Zhongli, before Farina existed. I just find it more consistent than trying to do Toma with VV Vape or trying to do, or, or in the abyss trying to do Bennett with VV Vape can be pretty annoying as well. I just realized that Toma is wearing sandal boots. Those are definitely sandal. I always thought he had badass boots, but those are sandal boots. Comment below if you knew that he was wearing sandal boots. And while you're down there, please subscribe. It actually really helps me out and it's pretty handled. Um, during Dendro, there was some talk of Virgin Yoimiya and I forgot to mention this earlier, but Baiju actually does work on this team. 
You do get the occasional Burgeon, which is super funny. And he also, he provides both healing to keep up with Farina, as well as some interruption resistance, allowing you to get your five hit combo off more frequently. You can also give him the instructor's artifact set, uh, buffing Yoimiya's reaction damage. So overall, he's actually not the worst choice for this slot, kind of a hybrid between a buffer like Bennett or Jean and a full on shielder, but you can't have a shielder with Farina. So he's kind of the only option for interruption resistance while having a healer. And as such, it's it's a really nice, um, comfy hybrid. I had slightly faster clear times with it, with it than just ba basic double hydro with Zhang Li. So maybe if you have these units, you want to give it a try. I don't recommend, you know, wishing for all these units. This is an expensive Yoimiya team, but if you have the units, then I, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Overall, Yoimiya has a ton of solid teams and a few ones that feel really, really good. Um, for Vivi, of course, you don't have to use Kazua. You can use Sucrose. You can use even Hazo, but I don't prefer it. I, I definitely prefer Kazua. Let me know in the comments if I missed any me teams and I'll add them to the pinned comment. For her build guide, you don't need to level 90 her right away. I'd say the sooner, the more that you're using her as a hyper carry, so like VV setups, where she's doing a higher percentage of the team damage, the more you want to focus on 90ing her. But the more you're using sub DPSs to do damage, such as the Jean, Yalan, Farina, the less important it is how much damage she's doing, because obviously your sub DPSs are doing a lot, but eventually you want to level 90 her, but it's, it's definitely pretty low on the totem pole, because even is in her close this thing to hyper carry setups she's not doing hyper carry amounts of damage like you're still having powerful sub dps's like yolan or singcho even on those hyper carry setups and she scales off of attack so it's less important to level 90 so you know and as, as usual animal units bloom units that, that are proccing blooms or hyper blooms or virgins or whatever are first then hp or defense scalers like farina novelette yolan then carries like yoimiya for level 90 priority for weapons obviously her best in slot is the thundering pulse and her second best in slot is is considered rust at r5 it provides a huge normal attack damage boat damage boost other weapons like aqua simulacra hunter's path polar star i've seen conflicting reports i'm pretty sure they're all a little bit worse than rust at r5 but depending on your stats depending on the team like this gives a huge percentage of damage bonus so maybe on farina teams some of the other weapons might pull ahead of rust because you're going to be over tap over capping on damage percent on uh, thundering pulse is de generally about a 10 to 12 percent increase over rust which is on the on the lower side for five star weapon increases for comparison who taos is around 35 percent for homa 25 to 35 depending novelettes is closer to 40 percent of an increase for his signature weapon uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that rust is only five percent better than the three star weapon the slingshot as long as you're using bennett on the team slingshot has a ridiculous crit rate a substat as well as a huge 60 percent damage increase from its passive so if you don't have the rust do not feel bad at all slingshot is within like four percent of the rest so very very three free to play friendly weapon i personally like that she can use the rest because it's not a bow that a lot of other characters will use so if you do have five star bows like you don't have to use them on her to have her performing to have her with a bow that performs at a five star level i do wish her signature gave her more of a boost but it is what it is i do think on farina teams probably it will give more of a boost because the damage percent because you're going to want the damage percent but it still gives attack and even thunder pulse gives damage percent too so yeah if you don't have rust r5 then the five star weapons are going to be better you don't want to go for either amos bow or for the skyward harp as both of them do get outperformed by the slingshot don't feel bad for using the slingshot it's a secret top tier four star weapon if you don't have high refined rust if you don't have five if you don't have five star bows free the slingshot is an amazing choice for talents her normal attack is by far the most important one to level up um, followed by her skill and some people i've seen don't even level up her burst at all uh, it doesn't hurt to level it up but you definitely want to prioritize the normal attack and skill first Nor with normal attack being much much more important as the multipliers it gives are just much higher for artifacts shimanawa's is her general best in slot i've seen back and forth um on with crimson witch i think sometimes maybe depending on the team maybe depending on something else i've seen crimson witch can outperform shimanawa but generally shimanawa is going to be the superior choice especially since her burst is not that useful if the burst 
first gave something like an, a damage percent bonus instead of an attack percent bonus to your other characters, then it would have more, much more value as you could buff Yolan and Farina, for example. But buffing only attack means that a lot of sub DPSs that you're going to be using are with, unless it happens to be, you know, Sing Cho and Fischl or something like that, the attack percent buff is just not going to be worth using, or it's not going to be, it's not going to be very impactful. It's not going to be, not, it's not that it's not worth using because it's still at least doing some damage. But yeah, generally Shimanawa, and if you have a good Crimson Witch set, then and then that that can be just as good or really close. Maria is a hunter is the best in slot when you're using her on Farina teams. Uh, it's a pretty solid 13-ish percent increase, somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. Pretty large increase, especially since the two-piece normal and charge attack damage increase is actually useful for Yoimiya, whereas a lot of characters just ignore the two-piece and only get utilized by the four-piece. I think if you are using Mari Shisei and Farina, there's a good chance that Thundering Pulse is really useful for you for giving, because because she already has a crit rate ascension stat, so it can be pretty tough to get to not overcap on crit rate with a normal build. So both of these artifact sets are very, very universal. You're probably going to be farming Golden Troop and Emblem. So who knows, you might even have a set for both of these that you can swap off depending on the teammates you're using your Yoimiya on. For main stats and sub stack, generally Elemental Mastery Sands is going to be your best choice as long as you're proccing Vaporize and that, you know her best teams. She vaporizes her first, third, and fifth hit, which are her strongest hits of her normal attack string. So Elemental Mastery, very good for her. Generally Pyro Damage Bonus for your Goblet. If you're using Mar should say hunter with farina attack percent can be just as good if not potentially better especially i'm not sure especially if you're using the rust it gives so much damage percent but it also gives attack percent so i'm not sure you can always use the artifact optimizer or test yourself i would generally just go with wh whichever one has better substat because i don't think the difference between pyro damage and attack is going to be that huge for her goblet um, if you're not using farina it's always going to be pyro damage goblet unless you get to like super highly refined thundering pulse and for her mask it's usually going to be crit damage because she has a crit rate ascension but obviously if you're it, just whatever whatever you get whatever your crit whatever your crit ends up being is what you want to go for for substats attack percent shouldn't be underrated it's very good for her elemental mastery and obviously crit she doesn't really want any er necessarily because you're not going to be bursting every rotation especially with shimanawa and it's not a big loss if you don't um you want 100 to 300 elemental mastery on her so elemental mastery sands is the way to go but i suppose if you have a ton of elemental mastery substat then maybe you can get away with an attack percent goblet or if you're using i don't know sucrose and lg for the end and instructors and you're getting lots of that um for her partners when you are using vv vape with bennett you do definitely want to consider you can use noblesse but you definitely want to consider using instructors on bennett so that you can give because elemental mastery is just generally a bigger buff than attack tent would be for vertical investment, like I said, Thundering Pulse being only a 10 to 12% increase isn't the biggest bang for your buck. And for her in her constellations, especially her early ones, all the way up until her C6, her constellations really aren't that amazing. So I would tend toward going for things like Yolan C2 or Farina C2 to make her team stronger rather than investing into her specifically, just because she didn't get the best early vertical investment option. Obviously, if you're simping for her, then that's something different. Her C1 is something like a 3% increase and her second maybe a 10. So having a 13% increase from her C2 and a 13% increase from her weapons, it's very, very low value. And even her C6 being only, it's only like a 50% total increase, 55% from all of her constellations. So I, I really would just save your money and save your wishes and go for supports. I personally wouldn't bother with her weapon. I wouldn't bother with her constellations. Go for Yolan C2 with her weapon. Go for Kazuha C2. Or you could go for Yolan C2 with Elegy. Nah, I would go for her. I would go for her weapon. Or Farina C2. It's unfortunate, especially with her counterpart Hutao gaining a lot from her C1 and Staff of Homa. Yoimiya gains very, very, very little. But at least for the free to plays, you are getting a very high percentage of her max damage just by getting her C0 with a four star weapon. So that's pretty cool. Um, I also think that this contributes a lot to the perception of her. A lot of characters' perception gets skewed by the early constellations and the five-star weapon. So, no, like for example, Novelette, he's broken it at C0 with, with, with a four-star weapon, don't get me wrong. Very, very broken. 
but a lot of people have his C1 or have his weapon or have both. And that just like makes him like 60% stronger than he is at C0, like a massive, massive increase. And it's the same thing with Hu Tao, very, very good at C0, but gets like a 50% increase at C1R1. Same with Raiden, C2 really skews people's perception of her. And same with Ayaka, her miss splitter, that's a massive increase. So Yoimiya not having a massive increase from her weapon or from her C1 makes the overall perception of her lower than it would be if she had a really strong weapon or constellation. But TLDR, save your money, stick to C0 with a four-star weapon. For value and power ranking, um, if you want to see my power ranking, check out my tier list. It'll be linked at the end card. Um, I do think she is she has a lower power ceiling than other five-star characters. Now, it is easier to reach her power ceiling. So for lower skilled players, players that don't want to necessarily optimize things, especially if you're using something like a double hydro Zhongli team, the amount of setup that's required is very low and so it's easier to reach her damage potential than some other characters so she might actually outperform Hu Tao on a lot of people's account. I've noticed the gap between Hu Tao and Yoimiya for me over the years of, of me playing this game has has widened. So when I first started playing both of them essentially felt like the same character and now I notice a significant difference between Hu Tao and Yoimiya. Granted I also have gotten Hu Tao's weapon since then so that's obviously a factor but I don't have the option to get a really good weapon for Yoimiya. Yeah. Um, for account value, I think that Hyperbloom really lowered the account value of Yoimiya. Like Yoimiya used to be like a top pick for a single target DPS that could just unga bunga bosses. But with Hyperbloom, you can pretty much easily make a Hyperbloom team with a lot of different characters in the game. And that is a very quick and easy way to unga bunga through the game. The, the seeds even directly auto target onto the enemies with some of the best auto targeting in the game, a lot better than Yoimiya's auto targeting. So I generally don't don't recommend Yoimiya either as a meta pull or as an account value pull, but I do recommend her if you like her because she is really fun to play. And as I said, she's one of my most used DPSs. I love her for the overworld. I think that if you're, this is where I kind of think that she saves herself as in the overworld, she's just so smooth and simple to play. Um, Hu Tao is horrible in the overworld. Like, like yes, Hu Tao is way better in the abyss, but losing tons of your health, setting the grass on fire, losing even more health, running out of stamina like Hu Tao feels terrible to play in the overworld and Yoimiya feels amazing um, I'm not joking when I say that she's my most used DPS now probably if Wanderer was a cute girl Wanderer would be my most used DPS because his flight ability is so good and he still he also has that similar auto targeting to Yoimiya but because Yoimiya is super cute and she also synergizes very well with Yolan using Yolan Bennett Kazwa and, and also Kazwa Yolan Bennett Kazwa in the overworld is just so 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 good um I I've tried many different characters to replace this overworld team, but I, I never do. Like when you're when you're doing the daily the monolith daily commissions or when you're fighting ley lines, just being able to pew 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 all the enemies down around you without even having to look at your screen, without having to reposition, without having to worry about Kazuo's burst blocking your view. She is so comfy and fun and smooth to play in the overworld. So if you're like not a super meta player, if you're not caring too much about 36 star in the abyss, like I think that she's a better pull than Hu Tao because you're probably gonna get sick of running out of stamina of losing your health for playing Hu Tao in the overworld like I get like stressed just thinking about playing Hu Tao in the overworld and like Shang Lang in the overworld like oh yeah Shang Lang's way better than Hu Tao than Yoimiya but you gotta power up Shang Lang's burst which is such a pain in the butt Yoimiya's is just her skill so I don't I, I think that's even even in the overworld you know Wanderer is probably a better a better DPS because of his vertical mobility but I don't know I don't like his hat I don't like his hair he's really annoying all this Deal, dealing with that in the overworld? Nah. Yoimiya is my overworld best friend, and no matter what I do, she won't leave my team, so... For future prospects, again, check out my Chevrolet guide, but I think Chevrolet will be really good for her. And in the future, I'm not sure. I feel like, I feel like, I don't know, Hu Tao keeps getting buffed. Every time new stuff comes out, it seems to benefit Hu Tao more than Yoimiya, with Hydro Residence buffing HP, with Farina working a little bit more of Hu Tao, with Shen Yun Cloud Retainer looking like it's gonna benefit Hu Tao more than Yoimiya. So I think Hu Tao, Yoimiya is due for something, but I'm not exactly sure what. Like we have, we have Yun Jin that buffs normal attack, but maybe there's more normal 
normal attack support coming somehow because not that many characters have all of their kit focused in on their normal attack and i think both yoimiya and ayato are the, the characters that mostly use their normal attacks and they're a little bit lower performing on the tier list so maybe there's some room for for hoyo to do more to buff buff normal attack other than that i mean yoimiya gets tiny buffs every time there's super annoying enemies that move all around a lot i don't know let me know what you think could hoyo could do to like buff yoimiya specifically without buffing other characters i'd be interested to hear and finally for overworld and aesthetic i mean i already talked about her overworld performance a lot final words hopefully you're not bummed out by me stating that i don't think she's as good as a lot of other dps's trust me i wish that she had a higher power ceiling she is one of my favorite design characters and i love her play style i love her animations i love her voice actor she is one of my favorite characters in the entire game but i try and keep it a buck here i try and keep it as unbiased as possible of course i have my biases you know i know that i'm tend i would tend to rate my favorite characters higher like a lot of people accuse me of bias over raiden and i understand it but i try and keep my bias out of it when i'm talking about power level specifically and i do think that yoimiya has some really nice quality of life in terms of the auto targeting and the range that do make up for her lower power it's not enough to fully make up for it and especially once you get good at hutao once you get good at a lot of these other characters the power difference really does start to show like my yoimiya stats are really really good like for not having a crit weapon like she has one of my best um crit value stats as well as it not just being crit value like i've got a bunch of elemental mastery in this feather here this off piece is insane like my sands is insane the goblet not crazy the hat not crazy but like this is a pretty good yoimiya um she's crowned like she's level 90 like i did not chintz out and i just feel like in the abyss she doesn't perform at the same level as most other dps but know that she's still good enough she's still good enough to clear the abyss she's still good enough to even feel quite strong but i just want to make sure that no one gets baited into the, into pulling her for power and that you do just pull her because you like her and know that she can perform very well even though she's not the strongest and i still think that you can be satisfied with her that you can really love her and that you can get a lot of use out of her and it's it's i just i'll finish with this it's okay that she's not the strongest in the abyss it's okay that she trades a little bit of that ceiling power for that comfort and ease of use in the overworld because again hu tao is asked to play in the overworld so is Chang Ling, and that's to be honest where you play most of the game so let's be happy with what we have that she is at least a great overworld character as long as well as being def a definitely decent abyss character take care bye for now